Dylan, where are we going? We're going to Empire. Why? To record a hamster running on a wheel. How do you feel about that, Nick? Uh, I think it's a weird, a weird way of doing the AF assignment, <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it goes. We need a fast one. We need a fast and, and endurance one. A furious hamster. Yeah, we need a fast one. Oh, look at him, he's already running. Okay, convenient. What's its name? Roborowski. <laughs> yes. That's a tiny hamster. This is not raw. And Nick is behind the camera recording. And this is Robo, the fastest hamster in Malaysia. And we're hamster trainers and we're going to train him for a hamster marathon. Okay, so in order to measure the distance that uh, our wonderful hamster Robo is going to run, we have a hamster wheel here. And um, you know, so, so we know how far he's running, we're going to measure the circumference of the hamster wheel so we can tell how far he's gone with every revolution. And, uh, See here, it is uh, 16 centimeters diameter, and so it's got an uh, 8 centimeter radius. Yeah. Okay, so basically, we place this piece of paper here to indicate when it makes one revolution. So when it comes all the way back around again, that's one revolution. So we're gonna record the hamster running on the wheel for 60 seconds with an iPhone stopwatch. So basically now we're going to put him into this colorful wheel and see how far he can run for a minute. Goodbye, hamster. Bye. We're lost. Not far. Can't find the car. We found the car. Yeah. 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 the Christmas decorations. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back from Empire after our hamster expedition and before we show you our results, we want to state some restrictions, right? First of all, the hamster is obviously an animal and not a plant or yeah, and because like it's a living thing, it will move by itself and will not follow any kind of mathematical equation. So it might, its movement might be similar to an equation, but it will not be uh, exact. As for the values, the time cannot be negative and the distance as well cannot be negative as the hamster doesn't travel backwards and time doesn't travel backwards as well. And yeah. Data. Okay guys, so here we have our data points, right? We have our x value and our y value, right? Time and speed. Um, initially we measured it in distance, but we cannot use distance because for our y value because it just keeps increasing, it doesn't decrease. So it's not a periodic Pattern. Yeah, so this is, this is our speed. So Nick got a radius of 8 for the hamster wheel. Um, and to get the circumference of the wheel, we, the formula for it is 2 pi r. So we calculated it and we got 50.2 centimeters per revolution. 
and we changed it to meters, so we divided it by 100, and this is what we got, 0 0.502 meters. So basically now we have to regress it to get the... Here we have our X points and our Y points. So now that everything is regressed, we're going to see if it fits our points. We're going to use sign. And this is our values. Okay, so to find our AKDC manually, first, uh, first we need to find our A value for, for our amplitude, right? So you take the maximum value, which in our case is 0 0.2, and the minimum value, which is 0. And you take the maximum value minus the minimum value over 2, right? So 0 0.2 minus 0 is over 2 is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is our A value. For our k value, we take the period, which is 2k, or uh, two, 2 pi over k. Um, in this case, our period is 25 seconds because for one cycle to complete, it's from 5 to 20, 5 to 30. So 5, 30 minus 5 is 25. So we've Two pi over twenty five. Our k is zero point two five. Yeah. Okay, so in order to find the horizontal shift, we have to take the maximum of a sine graph and as well of the maximum of our data. So as you can see, the maximum of sine graph is pi over two, and the maximum of our data graph is ten pi over eleven. So if you minus it, you get a value of negative one point three, and that is our horizontal shift. Moving on to our vertical shift, we take the maximum, which is 0 0.2, and plus it by our minimum, which is 0, and divide it by 2, which will give us a value of 0 0.1. Okay, so now we're going to find when the instantaneous rate of change is x equals to 6. So there are a few ways to do this, and I'm going to show you one way. Method one would be finding the dy dx of x equals to 6. So here at the calculator, this is the graph of our data. So in order to find it, you have to press second and calc. And on the 6 value, it will be dy dx, so you just press 6. Then in order to find it, this is already registered at x, so you just have to press 6 and press enter, which will give you a dy dx of... 0 0.01762149 uh, So this is another method um, Here we find um, the closest point to 6 that we can find to make it seem like we have another point um, to calculate the difference between um, the y points and the x points um, Here I use 6.001 and the answer is 0 0.016 0.01761, which is also the same as the dy dx.
If we have to cut it, we don't have to cut it.